Do you ever wonder what happens to the contents of your toilet after you flush? The wastewater treatment process has great impact on our standard of living. But it's not just your toilet. It's your garbage disposal, your dishwasher, your washing machine, your shower, anything that goes down the drain. Let's take a closer look at this process. Once the wastewater leaves your home, it enters what is called a collection system. This is a series of pipes and pumping stations. This transports the water to the wastewater treatment plant. In this instance, the pipes run right down the middle of the street. People who live in rural areas not connected to central collection systems use underground septic tanks like these. The biological process is the same, just on a smaller scale. We're at one of Pasco County's many pump stations, also called a lift station. As we talked about before, it reaches point to point by the flow of gravity. Obviously, it can't flow for miles by gravity. So, every now and then, there's a lift station to pump it up as it goes back down. The next station pumps it up again, flows back down. This is the pump station. It's actually underground and it's also called a wet well because it's a big tank about eight to 10 feet in diameter and about 20 foot deep. There are submergible pumps that pump it through these pipes to send it to the next pump station. While that's happening, a fan draws the odorous air through these pipes through the odor control system, which takes out the H2S, it's a bio sponge, draws it through to second stage carbon, which takes out other odorous compounds. We're here today to take a look at another type of odor control technology. The equipment behind me is called a chemical scrubber. We're at a water plant for logistical reasons, but the technology is still used the same as it would be at a wastewater treatment plant. A chemical scrubber works by drawing odorous air through a large fan into the scrubber. What happens in the scrubber is a chemical solution of caustic and bleach mixed small amounts into the scrubber. The chemical reaction causes the odorous compounds to be put into the water, which is shipped off to the wastewater treatment plant, and the result is clean air. So we've looked at the water coming from our homes, through the collection systems, where we looked at odor control technologies where needed, and now the water makes it here at the wastewater treatment plant. This is one of seven facilities in the county. This is the Land Lakes Water Reclamation Facility. As we talked about before, septic tanks have to be pumped about once a year. When they are pumped, trucks like these pump it out of the septic tank, transport it to the wastewater treatment plant, where it's pumped into the pipelines, ascend it through, and it's processed through the wastewater treatment plant. The structure behind me is called the headworks. It's where the screening process takes place to remove all large solids that cannot be broken down biologically. We're at the headworks of the wastewater treatment plant. Above us is a large screw type screen which grinds up paper products and feminine products, along with food particles that would not otherwise be treated biologically later on in the wastewater treatment process. It drops down into this dumpster, which is then hauled off to the landfill three times a week. In a similar process, grit removal has the same tool used. It drops down into this dumpster. This tool takes out sand and grit, very small particles, and it is also hauled off to the landfill. This is the screening process. It uses a large screw type piece of machinery to take out solids. Here's a closer look at what's taken out during the screening process. Here you see mostly paper. Here we see grit and smaller particles taken out in the grit chamber. The headworks is a source of odor, so odor control technology is used. Here an iron sponge with second stage carbon is installed. After the screening process to remove large solids, the next phase of the plant is the biological process, which includes the anoxic chamber and aeration chamber. This is called the activated sludge process. This plant is actually divided into two separate trains, one on each side of the center sidewalk. 
The wastewater flows through the process by gravity flow. The anoxic basin begins the biological process by removing nitrates from the waste stream. Several types of nitrates are present in the organic waste. In the anoxic chamber, microorganisms are starved of oxygen, which is required for them to live. To survive, they take oxygen molecules from wherever they can get them. Once the nitrate compounds are stripped of their oxygen molecule, the nitrogen is released as nitrogen gas. Carbon dioxide and water are also produced. The waste flow then enters aeration chambers where the waste is mixed with air. This helps to complete the stripping of the nitrogen molecules and enriches the waste with oxygen. This process increases the growth and activity of microorganisms which break down the solids and remove contaminants in the waste stream. The process forms the major portion of the work in the biological process. The clarifiers are the large, round vessels that slow the waste stream enough to allow most of the microorganisms to settle to the bottom of the tank. Approximately 80% of the solids that settle here are pumped back to the first anoxic chamber, which provides an abundance of healthy microorganisms back to the wastewater process. The clarifiers use a system of scrapers to remove floating scum and a system of baffles and weirs to allow the clear water to be isolated and sent for final treatment. The 20% of the sludge that is not recycled is sent to a sludge digester tank where it is stabilized. The large trucks you see here haul the sludge to another Pasco facility where it is dried and used as fertilizer by local farms. From the clarifiers, the water flows by gravity to the sand filters, which operate much like the gravel in your aquarium. The water is allowed to flow down through the sand to remove additional solids. The flow is diverted and the sand is backwashed periodically to remove the trapped solids. More sand is added as needed. The clarity of the water, called turbidity, is measured to ensure proper solids removal. While relatively clear, the water still contains microscopic organisms. The final step in the treatment process is disinfection. This process introduces bleach to the reclaimed water to kill any remaining microorganisms. The bleach is the same liquid we use in our swimming pools. The disinfection basin is a series of concrete channels designed to allow 15 to 20 minutes of contact time, giving the bleach time to disinfect. This water is tested to ensure the proper chlorine residuals. After chlorination and testing, these pumps pump the water to the two storage tanks. The reclaimed water is stored here until needed for irrigation purposes. We use reclaimed water mostly to irrigate our lawns, golf courses, and public areas. To meet future demands, reclaimed water may someday be recycled into our drinking water. It's already done in some parts of the world. I'm Greg Wingo. Please use and conserve water wisely. Thank you for watching.